All right. I'm just going to go ahead and welcome everybody, and in the interest of staying on time, um, get started. But it's a familiar and small crew, which is great. Um, I have some handouts, so feel free to help yourself or grab some and pass them around. Um, there's two different ones about breathing and qigong, and kind of um, introducing today's topic, the microcosmic orbit. I think all of you know me, but just for the sake of the video, I'm Beth Howlett. I am uh, a licensed acupuncturist and graduate of the Oregon College of Oriental Medicine. Um, I'm the community education coordinator, so I do outreach education and also continuing education for practitioners. Um, in the same vein as the last lecture and, and this one, also just talking about principles of cosmology and place, we have a feng shui seminar coming up in May, if you weren't aware of it. It's open to the public and it's about um, how to use feng shui to create healing spaces. So it's open to anyone who'd be interested. And there's some information on the table over there. Um, and I also want to give a thanks to the garden, who is here in body, although not in person, um, for letting us do these lectures on an ongoing basis. It's a real pleasure and an honor to get to be in the space. So thanks to the garden and thanks to you all. Um, the microcosmic orbit. How many of you have ever heard of the concept of the microcosmic orbit? Me? I may not have had that title for mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it may seem familiar if anyone's ever done any meditation or even yoga, kundalini yoga uses some similar ideas to this. Um, just a little background because my background is in Chinese history, I always like to put things in some perspective. So this is really a very Taoist part of the medicine. Although in China when Taoism and Buddhism came together, they created I would say a sort of unique hybrid um, branch of Buddhism, which is Chan in Chinese or Zen in Japan. To me, it's kind of a hybrid of some of the ideas of Taoism filtered through Buddhism. <laughs> um, Taoism tends to emphasize spontaneity and naturalness. Um, and so this is meditation based on the idea that you have a microcosm, a map of the natural world within your body. And the most fundamental circuit of that is the microcosmic orbit combining the dumai, the governor vessel of the spine, and the runmai, which runs through the center line. We'll get into more of that, but effectively, those were very Taoist ideas. Um, in terms of the history of Qigong and Chinese medicine, um, there's a lot of speculation about where it came from. I think one of the theories that I enjoy and sort of adhere to is that a long, long time ago, before we wrote a lot of things down, um, People practiced arts, they practiced exercise arts, they imitated the movements of animals, they observed the stars, they observed nature, and they observed themselves. And through these reflective mindfulness, breathing, and meditation practices, they became aware of their bodies, pathways in their bodies, drew those pathways, needled those pathways, learned how the pathways work through the needling, and through a reflexive process of Qigong and what became medical practice, we have the acupuncture channels of today. This is just one theory. Some say set tattoos, some say it came from other things. Um, are any of you familiar with the Ma Wang Dui site, one of the oldest excavated grave sites in China? Um, there's some early versions of like the Tao Te Ching that were unearthed there that are very different than the modern, as well as some of the energetic maps of the channels, and they're very simplified. Effectively, they just show two to even four channels, and two of them being the ones that run through the center line and just a couple on the arms. It's not fully developed into the 12 channels that we recognize today. Um, so through Taoism, you bring Buddhism and um, some of its ideas around releasing yourself um, from desire through meditative practices and through mindfulness in your daily living. Those two things come together in Chinese culture in a lot of unique ways. And I would say some of Taoism is flavored by Buddhism and vice versa within the Chinese cultural traditions. Um, I have listed here some books that, if you are feeling scholarly, will certainly introduce you to some of the history of Taoism, um, as well as mostly actually Taoism and then some medicine. Um, last week we talked about the Huangdi, or two weeks ago, the Huangdi Neijing and the Yijing, the Book of Changes, this idea of change underlying everything, but the process of change is fixed. So change is unchanging and changing at the same time. This is very essential to Chinese thought and medical practice. Um, you also have the Huangdi Neijing, um, which talks about the channels again and mentions some of these practices of self-cultivation, how the energy flows through the channel, how one can use those energetic flows to improve your health. Um, that definitely underrides the microcosmic orbit meditation we're going to talk about today. 
Um, and then some of the more classics of Taoism and meditation. Um, of course, you have Zhuang Zhe Laozi, and then the Huainan Zhe. Those are three of the oldest Taoist texts in existence. I'm sure some of you are familiar with Lao Tzu um, in his book, The Tao Te Ching. Um, you also have Zhuang Zhe, who's actually more my favorite. He's a little less esoteric, more of a storyteller. Um, but some of the same messages about spontaneity, naturalness, and man's place in the natural world. And then um, a fairly recent translation of an old Taoist meditation text, this one at the bottom, the Tai Yi Jin Hua Dong Zhi, <laughs> which is the secret of the golden flower. And the golden flower mm -hmm. meditation on the light, again, these are Taoist meditation practices that are essentially silent, seated, visualization, breath-based meditation practices. So I always put this slide in there because you can't go over this stuff enough. It's just too fundamental to Chinese medicine. Um, again, we have yin and yang together give us qi. The interactions of yin and yang give us the natural world. They give us breath. In this case, again, specifically, we have a yin channel on the front of the body, the yin part of the body, a yang channel on the spine, on the yang part of the body. Yang, sunlight hits the back, right? This part tends to say shadowed, closed, interior. So yin and yang. These two things together circulate through a microcosmic orbit through breath, give us breath, give us the chi um, that circulates throughout our body. We also have the five phases, slightly less relevant at the very basic level of this, but one can use this microcosmic meditation breath exercise as a foundation for a much deeper practice and get into things like transforming the elements, working with the organ systems as you transit through them, um, you can get really deep into the alchemy, like we talked about um, two weeks ago with astrology. It can get incredibly complicated um, if you start looking at the way all of the systems are interacting with the season and the body and the time of year and the time of day and the person. Um, but one can again work with these five phase ideas of generation and control, again, to optimize health through visualization and through an understanding of the channel and, and how they overlay with these principles. Um, particularly in this case we're talking about yin and yang is really the focus of today. So we have these two meridians, couldn't get simpler. One goes straight up through the spine. Both of them start kind of on the perineum. Um, they start really at the root. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of Kegel exercises, but again the pelvic floor, this is where both of these begin. Um, one ascends through the spine, the dumai, the governor vessel. Surprise, surprise, the governor, it goes through the spine, it relates to the central nervous system. So it really is the controlling vessel. It goes all the way up through the spine, through the brain, and ends coming down through here, here. So this is the end for the Ramai. And this is showing the path of the exercise, although both of them actually ascend in terms of the recognized channel order of points. The other one, again, coming from the pelvic floor, straight up the midline of the body. This one, the conception vessel, right? So especially in women, it goes right through the seat of conception. It goes right through the uterus, will come up the midline, and ends right about here. So you have two that end on either side of the lips. They do not connect. How many of you have done a meditative practice before, Tai Chi or Qigong? Um, how many of you in doing that were told to put the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth? Do you know why you do that? It is, to, used to. <laughs> it is to connect these two, right? One ends here, one ends here. When you place the tongue, as one ends in the root of the tongue, to the tip of at the top of the mouth, where the do mine ends, you connect the run and the do. So if nothing else you learn today, that's very important to meditative practice because you're connecting these two foundational yin and yang energies through placing the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth to complete this microcosmic orbit. So sometimes it's called the small celestial circuit, the microcosmic orbit. Effectively, this is again the fundamental yin, earth, foundational energy, yang, heaven, sky, above energy. This is how the two combine together in a natural circuit, like a wheel that turns and generates all life. Yes? So should you do that on a regular basis or only in meditation? What are your so um, because I can really feel that. Yeah, um, I think that if one is doing any mindfulness practice, no matter how small, it doesn't hurt. Um, I was going to address this later, but I also think it's very important when doing this kind of work to open and close. So to just always do it in some sense is acknowledging a qigong state without kind of creating the space for it and then closing the space off. 
you know, how you feel about the energetics of the world, but if you walk around with an open door, all kinds of things can walk in. Oh, it's so it opens to me, in your aura? Uh, well, you're connecting something at a very foundational level. And this is just me. I tend to feel that the practice-based going to a specific place to meditate, having specific opening and closing rituals is really an aspect of self-protection. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they're important. Other people might feel differently. That's just for me, my own take on it. Um, but you're right, you feel it when you do it, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> that if you're in tune, you notice you've connected something. It's like plugging in. Um, so um, that's my opinion. I'm just going to leave it at that. So, major point. Um, we have major points because these are major meridians for treatment. We use these a lot in acupuncture. Um, you can certainly use them in self-care. Um, I love this slide just because um, this is the 12 earthly branches that we talked about. Again, this is a microcosm of the macrocosm. So the 12 stations of the year, the 12 months, are mapped onto the microcosm of your body. So you have each of these stations right here on this orbit. Um, essentially, you have, much like on Earth, when it rains down and then it steams up, you have this balance between an earthly water and a heavenly fire that is constantly steaming and giving you this sort of internal atmosphere, right? So at the base, you have what we call the Ming Mun, the kidney gate, the life gate fire, which is rooted right here in the pelvic floor.